an arm, but I'm, I'm absolutely sure that they'd have been appreciated by his fellow professionals and, and the people that he played with. Very sad news of this week, and uh, Clyde Banks' game with Wraith has been postponed today out of respect for Davy Cooper, and that loss is felt throughout the Scottish game. One well, to Davy Cooper, the streets around Hill House Church in Hamilton were packed with supporters. During the funeral service, Rangers manager Walter Smith and Ali McCoy paid moving tributes to the winger who died from a massive brain hemorrhage last week. Lorraine Davidson reports. Dozens of big names from the world of Scottish football arrived at Hill House Parish Church to pay their last respects to one of the most skillful footballers Scotland has ever produced. More than 400 people, including managers, players and friends, joined Davy Cooper's family for the service. Rangers manager Walter Smith paid tribute to the man who entertained millions of Scots during his career. There have been many good players at Rangers. There have been many great ones. There are very, very few of them who reach legendary status. Last Thursday, Davy Cooper became a Rangers legend. Such was Cooper's skill and popularity, fans and players from opposing clubs put aside traditional rivalries. So great was their admiration for the man. It's a sad fact of life that sometimes when you meet people you hear a worship, it's a disappointing moment, not Davy Cooper. When I joined Rangers from Sunderland in 1983, Davy was the established superstar. I was a youngster who started to prove himself and I couldn't have found a better influence. I watched, I listened, and I learned from Davy. I watched these skills. I'd love to have copied them, but that was mission impossible. And Davy Cooper's close friend, John Williams, paid tribute to the fans sharing the grief of those who knew him better. So for any of us to take something from this tragedy, which is to look at Ibrooks, Fir Park, and Kilbibby, to see the outpourings of grief felt all over the country and to say that we were proud to have known Davy Cooper. Davy Cooper will never be forgotten by his family or friends, but wreaths outside the church demonstrate the sense of grief felt by people who knew him as a boy, those who met him during his career and even those who never met him. It was brilliant. This was so sad, but... What are your memories of him? Mostly the Scottish Cup winning it. It was him that won it for us. It's brilliant. Some for you. Do you have many memories of him? Aye, aye, aye. Every time he wore a blue jersey. But as a person, he was a special, special guy, really, you know. Yeah, tremendous football player. Just a total one off. You know? He's a wonderful footballer, wonderful person. It's good looks. <laughs> It'll be like the best. Scottish football has lost one of its most skillful players, one of its greatest ambassadors, and one of its nicest men. And there'll be an hour-long tribute to Davy Cooper on Scottish television later this evening, immediately following news at 10. ...the Hamilton Church to pay their last respects to Davy Cooper, who was buried today. Rangers manager Walter Smith led the tributes, saying that God had given the footballer a great gift. The former Scotland winger died on Thursday after a brain hemorrhage. Alan Mackay reports. They'd been there from early this morning for Davy Cooper's funeral service, though it didn't start till half past one. One estimate said 10,000 in all, the church itself taking 400. It was a family funeral, of course, but a who's who of Scottish football as well. The former Rangers manager, Jock Wallace, who'd signed Davy Cooper, with Jack Steedman, chairman of Clyde Bank, his first senior club. Alec Ferguson, who'd managed him while with Scotland, and Celtic's Charlie Nicholas, visibly moved, who was with Davy Cooper the day he collapsed while making a television programme. But it was the current Rangers manager, Walter Smith, who'd been asked by Davy Cooper's family to begin the tributes. God gave Davy Cooper a great gift. I don't think that he could be disappointed with the way it was used. <laughs> Last Thursday, he took away the ultimate gift to David Cooper. Last Thursday, David Cooper became a Rangers legend. There'd been wreaths from all the players' clubs, one from Celtic, and one from a local primary school where he'd often gone to speak. In a tightly knit community, the minister said David Cooper was a man who kept in touch with friends made years ago 
and never passed an old neighbour on the street. Many there said they hadn't come just to remember the football skills. Yeah, the man, uh, he, was, he wasn't a close friend, but I did know him. I had met him a few times and he really did. He was a really nice guy. I'm a Rangers fanatic and I, I knew him quite well. And uh, I thought he was the greatest. Other fans have even been sending messages of sympathy via a worldwide computer link. Davy Cooper was buried in a private ceremony later as the tributes continued outside the church. I was at Ibrox yesterday and they've done it yesterday, but it was fantastic. This is unreal. It's nice to see just what you have thought of anyway, and a gentleman through and through. It's a, it's a very sad day. We're all feeling it, and I think you can see by the turnout what uh, David Cooper meant to uh, the people of Hamilton, the people of Scotland, and uh, football in general. For the last 20 years or so, David Cooper has often been a hero. On Saturday afternoons and Wednesday nights, regularly provoking in fans of his clubs and his country unrestrained joy. This particular Monday afternoon in Hamilton, many of those same fans showed their grief at their hero's funeral. Alan Mackay reporting Scotland, Hamilton. The owners of... Cooper giving it to Gordon Smith. Smith accelerates, that's Jardin. McKean. Johnston. Gordon Smith. Cooper. Left foot goal, a brilliant equaliser. Headed by Johnston. Johnston scores. Cooper took a really perfect free kick there. Flighted it right across, close to the far Johnston unmarked, rose to hit it. I was always a Rangers supporter. Uh, used to go and see them uh, every Saturday in the, the, the local bus. And uh, when I played for Clive Bank at first, there was a lot of speculation uh, about me actually signing for Rangers. But I think what really done it was the League Cup games that we played against them. We played Clive Bank get drawn against Rangers, and they actually we played four games against them. And eventually Rangers went through. But I think after that. Had showed up quite well in these matches, and it was just a matter of time after that. And the Rangers came in for me, so I was delighted. I remember the, the first final actually was the League Cup, and I managed to score a goal against Celtic. Uh, we beat them 2 1 when Gordon Smith scored an extra time. But it's been a tremendous trophy for me. Uh, Smith quickly to the other end. Cooper and Mark. Back to Smith. Smith going on the outside, but running into trouble, turns it out in front, Cooper scores! Cooper scores for Rangers, six minutes from half-time, Dave Cooper's seventh goal of the season, made by Gordon Smith, finished off by Dave Cooper's powerful left foot. Stark now sets up something on the break, now the pace of Milne can carry him clear, get help in the middle from Bannon. it in they might well have left that Redford Ian Redford surely wins the cup for Rangers absolutely unbelievable two minutes left oh that free kick out on the far side fighting in by Cooper Hegarty was unchallenged he 
Gears little chip shot, catching McCall by a couple of yards off his line. And Rangers take the lead. Now Russell again into the final minute of the first half. Might be some stoppage time, some injuries. Holding play up a couple of times with Davy Cooper. Russell has taken up good position. Stepping inside by the McLeod and a penalty kick has been given. A penalty kick to Rangers. Hoist against Bonner. Perfectly stopped away by Ali McCoyce. And Rangers take the lead. The 50 minutes of the second half gone. Is this the second for Rangers? Yes, Sally McCoyce has done it. Good pass from Proven. Just Tommy Burns, McClare and McGarvey making runs up front. McClare has gone to the left. Burns committing the Rangers defence. Still Burns going all the way and that'll be a free kick. So Burns over the ball. McLeod is waiting. By McClare, the set piece brings Celtic back into the game. And they finish the first half in the same fashion as Rangers finished. They finish the second half rather the same way. And the challenge coming into the back. The penalty kick has been given. And yes, drama again at the end of the second half. McCoyst has been penalised. So the referee, Bob Valentine, sorting things out. Mark Reed will take the kick. He scored four out of four this season so far. That makes it five. And Celtic have tied it up at two apiece. It's Jimmy Nicol. That'll be a penalty, yes. Aiken penalised for that rash challenge on Ali McCoy. McCoy facing Pat Bonner with a kick which could win the League Cup for Rangers. After Sandy Clark, they were replaced in the match. David Cooper. And there's the goal scoring hero, Ali McCoy. Davy collected no fewer than seven Scottish League Cup winners' medals during his 12 years with Rangers. This was a 1986 final against Celtic, and it ended up with him scoring the winner. Durant had put Rangers one up, then Brian McClear equalised. But then, that man Davy Cooper stepped up late on, and Rangers had won another League Cup. Hamden has been very lucky for me. Um, I've never been one really for scoring a lot of goals, but uh, I remember the, uh, goals that I've scored from free kicks, and they all seem to be in semi-finals and finals, and, and lucky enough at Hamden, it seems to be a lucky place for me for, for notching in the bigger matches. That's one for Falk for the chase, he's tied it up again at three apiece. McCoy's continues his excellent penalty kick form, gives Rangers the lead. Inventing a long run up. And he picked a different corner this time. So another expert in the penalty spot. Remember the one he scored for Scotland against Wales in Cardiff to get Scotland on course for the World Cup. Here he goes again. Absolutely deadly. Disaster for Aberdeen and for Peter Nicholas in particular. And it's Robert Fleck now. The Rangers have the advantage. One miss from Aberdeen. Robert Fleck again who has scored from the penalty spot for Rangers before. Comfortably scooped into the net. That's well taken by Weir. A very short run up from Francis. But Thoroughly effective and Leighton is frustrated, he guessed right that time. He just wasn't quick enough to get across to his right. Here's Hewitt against the Walker. Well, not struck with too much conviction, but it was good enough to find the net. If Durant scores, Rangers are the winners. There will be no need for any other kick. In the Stall League Cup, after a match packed full of drama, I think the fans had everything in that game. Eventually, when it went to, to penalty kicks, you had the, the shootout at the end of it as well. But uh, we thought we'd actually lost it when Aberdeen took the lead near the end of the game. And they managed to, Robert Fleck managed to force in an equaliser. But at Everton that day, it was actually a, a shame that one of the teams had to lose in that afternoon. 
people say what's the best goal you've ever scored and, and that one certainly comes to mind. Um, it's one of these free kicks that you, hit, you just catch perfect. Um, I, I remember about a week later I was in the... Uh, Jim Duffy had a testimonial game, a benefit game about a week after that final and, and it was a Premier League select was playing so Jim Layton was in the same dressing room and some of the boys were giving him a bit of a ribbon about uh, me hitting the ball past them, you know, and, and Jimmy looked up to me and says, do you know something, Coop? He says, I, I nearly got my hand to that. And I just looked at him. I was waiting for the punchline, but it never came. And I says, I no way out. Well, so that's Cooper free on the left. Oh, a chance for Rangers. Cooper taking on McGrain. That's McCoy. For much of his career, Davy Cooper was known as the Moody Blue. But that was a myth. His great pal, Ali McCoy. Ah, he wasn't a moody at all. He, he used to play on it, you know. It, it was great because I think it was actually it was either Graham Sunis or, or Big Terry Butcher nicknamed him Albert Tatlock because he, he used to write he was moaning all the time. But which wasn't the case at all. He used to play on it, Davey, you know, and he used to he had a tremendous dry sense of humour, which uh, which, which shone out and uh, and some of the some of the stories in the dressing room. And, and Davey, as I say, he used to play on this this moody blue tag that he got, but um, he wasn't moody at all. He, he was a genuine, very very genuine and honest person. And, and great to be involved with. Undoubtedly, Davy's happiest playing days were with Rangers. To sign for the team you always wanted to sign for is one thing, but to finish that season uh, the way we did with, with winning the domestic treble was absolutely fantastic. Um, Big Jock Wallace being the manager, I mean, t he was Rangers through and through as well. It was just a, a tremendous season for us. With a few young players came in at that time, myself, uh, Gordon Smith and Bobby Russell all came at the one time. And when you put the three of us alongside the kind of older players like John Gregg, Sandy Jarden, Tom Forsyth, Colin Jackson was there. What we did have that season I think was a, a really good blend with the older players, the old heads and, and the younger lads came in. But it turned out a fantastic season for everybody concerned. The Scottish Cup final 1978, his first season at Ibrooks, and Rangers win the treble. Cooper coming infield, Derek Johnston. Russell, Johnson signaling for a return. Alec McDonald, put on a ball for Alec McDonald. 34 minutes, Rangers one up. Cooper, Cooper twisting away from Kennedy, but Kennedy stabbed at a foot there, got it to Sullivan. Sullivan going in with Russell. Rangers throw. Jordan. McLean with his left foot. And a great header by Johnston. Great goal by Johnston. 2 0 for Rangers. Sullivan. Miller. Scanlon. McMaster. Cut across. And Richie had a chance there. The ball dropped oh, it. Scored. Scored. Richie has scored. Fullback Richie has scored. Is it too late for Aberdeen? Five minutes from the end, here it is again. The fly. That's it. Rangers have won. It was a great match, but there's always a lot of pressure on a match like that when you're actually, not only are you going for the Scottish Cup, but you're also going for the treble. And I think there was a lot of pressure in the game that day. Uh, but we managed to come through and, and the scenes in the dressing room and around Hamden after the game were tremendous. Tinnually surprised others with his skill in the park, but we surprised him in a Scott Sports special two years ago. I think I played once against him, and then it was a friendly match against, uh, with Feyenoord, with Cruyff against him. He was, he was a gr very great player. It is a pity that I didn't see him on the continent, of course, he could only played there, you know, in Scotland, and uh, he was, for me, one of the greatest players that I ever seen, and uh, I wish him uh, a good year. Davey, how much did you pay him? 
That's certainly a surprise. Um, it's a very big honour hearing a man like that saying something like that. Yeah, tremendous player he is. See, did you know he was a fan? Jerry McNee was over <coughs> there recently and Hulett offered this. He obviously rates you extremely highly. No, I, I certainly didn't, Jim. I didn't know. I remember playing against him, but uh, I didn't know he was saying things like that about us. But that's tremendous to hear from a player, you know, with his calibre. That was the first time I've seen David Cook. It was unbelievable at times, you know. I, I, I really lived off Coops back quite a lot in terms of goals I scored. 
And uh, you know what I used to realise about Coop was you had, you had to let him have his cuddle at the ball. He liked his touches on it. And then when he'd had his touches, if you made the runs, uh, Coop had a fantastic vision. A lot of people talk about Coop as a winger. I never saw him as a winger, Jim. I think that he was misused a lot of years as in the wing. I think if he'd been a continental player, he would always have been in the midfield because that was his best role. Having a free role, able to get on the ball, dictate play. He was a fantastic player. And if any, any abiding memory you've got of him, it's basically his passing ability, not just his dribbling. His dribbling was fantastic. Everybody recognises that. But he was a great user of the ball as well. And, uh, you know, most of us that played along with him in those days who scored goals lived off the likes of him and Tommy McLean, who were great, had great vision and great passes of the ball. He, he was certainly the man for the big occasion, wasn't he, Gordon? Good boys. I mean, he scored vital goals in games. And, you know, at the end of that season, I went there in Rangers in 77. Coop and I, the very first cup final, we both played in our first cup final together against Celtic and uh, you know we, we scored the two goals that day so you know f in our first cup final to score two goals Coop gave it notice there that he was a man for the big occasion and he went on to score a few vital goals in cup finals for Rangers They're losing out to the chance again for Cooper and that's the opener of Davy Cooper Derek Johnson. Cooper playing it in. Bobby Russell makes it two. And that really was a wicked free kick from Davy Cooper. 20 minutes gone, 2-0 to Rangers. Bannon's free kick punched away by Stewart. Chance for Bannon to start up, bring it into Wolf Dodge. 2 1. David Dodge puts United back in the match. Another chance for Betts. Russell followed by Kirkwood. This by Copal, but not by Neri. Good start from Cooper. Donald wants it inside the fullback. Had a, a bit of a bad time after uh, I went away and during that spell, not because I went away, but uh, you know he was he was out of things a lot a bit and he lost his his appetite a bit. And the funny thing was Brighton wanted to take Coop and I at the same time. They put in a bid uh, for the both of us, and the Brighton manager told me that Alan Mullery and uh, you know Rangers would only sell one of us, and it was me that actually got sold, probably for the benefit of Rangers Football Club in those days, because you know Coop would never had a great career and been looked upon the way he was, but uh, we could have gone together. So. You know, Coop was a bit disappointed at the time he hadn't managed to move away, but, but it worked out well for him in the end because he ended up having 14 years at Rangers and his latter part of his career was his best time. I didn't have a good time under John Gregg for the five years that he was there. Um, some players don't get on with certain managers and I don't think John particularly fancied me, so I ended up a lot of that time in, in the five years on the bench and he was bringing people like young John McDonald through. Uh, but it, it, it was because uh, he was my kind of manager, big jock. He would, he would give the tactics to other players round about the field, but he always used to say to me, just you go out and get the ball and do what you're good at. And uh, that was me down to a tee. I loved that kind of manager. And Big Jock Steen was the very same. Uh, not too much tactically minded, but just to get out there and, and do it on the ball. Jock Steen was a key figure in Davies' international career. Davies' first goal came against Yugoslavia at Hamden. But one of their finest nights came in the World Cup qualifier with Spain. I remember the, the match against Spain when we knocked them. Uh, won the game at Hamden. Uh, it was great to play alongside these guys and I managed to lay the ball off to Kenny Douglas for the third goal that he curled away from the goalkeeper. But that was another fabulous night. Oh, a tremendous effort, the ball's in the net. Mo Johnson has made it. 12 minutes from half time. Mo Johnson gives Scotty a vital lead. And it was set up by this tremendous shot. We'll see in a moment as we see the tennis come out. There was Nicol on the volley, a fine save from Orcanada. A 
and racing it first to the ball. The diving header from Mo Johnson. Dennis header. Good running by Betts. The pass came from Willie Miller. Here's Johnson. 2-0 to Scotland. Three minutes from half time. This again, a goal of the highest quality. Miller lofting it forward. Bet trying to run brilliantly. Got three of the defence on the right. A splendid outswinging cross. Johnston going up the powerful header. And Akanara was helpless. Camacho up to organise the free kick. They can stay on the line. Double for Scotland. The header and it's Daikajia who has made it. 2-1 with that surprise header. Well, you'll see Leighton starting to come. He then checked out. Rekichi arrived in the box, got up well. He wasn't challenged well. Ball bouncing over Jim Leighton. And that puts Spain right back in the match. Good ball the off. There's Kenny Dalglish making the angle for the shot. September 85 and Scotland against Wales at Cardiff at stake the chance of a place in the Mexico World Cup Mark Hughes looking for space in the box good long throw the header out was by Nickel. Nickel again challenging Sharp nodding it down. Handball! That is a penalty kick. Scotland have a penalty kick in the most dramatic circumstances. And now a vital moment which could have incredible bearing on the future of the game at home. Well, we'll see again this clear case of handball. The header down from Graham Sharp on by Speedy, handled by Phillips, and the penalty kick will be entrusted to Davy Cooper. He's already scored for Rangers in the spot this season, and this could be the penalty kick with 10 minutes to go to send Scotland to the playoffs for Mexico. Cooper has made it, the most vital kick of his career, and Davy Cooper equalises for Scotland. The Grangetown and bush to life. I had only come on as a sub. I was only on for 15 minutes or so. Uh, we were one down anyway. We were struggling in the game. We were one down. So I, th I think what happened is people say to me now, why why did you end up taking the penalty and just coming on? Well, the truth is, Big Roy Aitken put the ball in my hands and they all walked the other way. So <laughs> I was definitely going to take the penalty kick that night. Um, but really, I looked upon it as a chance to get back into the game. Uh, as I say, we were out anyway. So I've put the ball down, and to be fair, it wasn't the best penalty I've ever hit. He really should have saved it when you look at it after it. Uh, but it went in between the sticks, and it was a great, great result on the night. There goes the final whistle. Scotland have got the result they wanted so badly. To be so high f uh, from getting a result, and all of a sudden to... Uh, I, rem I remember it vividly, but as soon as the final whistle went, uh, Alec Ferguson had come onto the park and he, he told me to keep the players on the park. He said that uh, Big Jock had collapsed and we didn't know what was going on. So the fans obviously are on the park and they're rushing about and, and we stayed there for, I remember, two or three minutes. <coughs> and eventually we went back in the dressing room and the dressing room was just silent. Everybody was just sitting there and, and we didn't know what was happening. And I think it was a full five, ten minutes before somebody came in from the SFA and said we'd lost Big Jock. 
and really I don't think a word was spoken from then getting back to the airport and back to Glasgow. It d really puts into perspective what football was all about and what a result was that night. To lose a man like that was, was a tragedy. Sunes is there. Strachan is there. And Cooper is there. With a vengeance. A very, very important goal for Scotland. It's come from Davy Cooper. 12 minutes into the second half. Cooper saw a gap and found it. And Greedy, I think, was caught in too central a position. On from Dalglish, and McAvenny's onside. It's two. Inside three minutes. And Frank McAvenny has marked his first appearance for his country with the sort of goal he's been scoring all season for West Ham. I enjoyed being involved in the World Cup, obviously. Uh, I think I was only on 12 minutes in the first game and, and 18 in the second or something. But it was tremendous to finish your career and say that you were involved in a World Cup. Um, when we went there, the, the, the first two weeks training we'd done was, was tremendous. Uh, we went to a place called Santa Fe and the, the training uh, was brilliant and we prepared well for it. Uh, but we were drawn in a very difficult section uh, against the Germans and Uruguayans, teams like that, Denmark, the first game. So that to be involved in it was, even for the short time that I was there, was an experience. I mean, players like Jim Bett, who was my roommate in that trip, Jim actually went there and didn't go on the park at all, so he was not chuffed at that time, so at least I was on the park at certain stages. The arrival of Graham Souness in 1986 saw an immediate improvement in the fortunes of Rangers and Davy Cooper. There's McCoy! Well, it don't come any better than that. Now Derek Ferguson. There's McCoy. Away from Jordan. Pulling it back for Barnes. To Cooper. And Cooper has done it for Rangers. Terry Cooper. Once again, teasing Neil Berry. Once again, getting the better of him, and there's a chance again for Rangers! Durant! When a new manager comes into a club like that, I think every player uh, suddenly thinks, well, what's going to happen here? Do, does he fancy me? Does he think I can do a job for him? Every single player, I can assure you, that gets through their mind. Uh, I was lucky enough that I played with Graham at international level, and uh, obviously been round about the hotel before matches. I'd spoken to him a few times, and, and it was actually when we went, uh, when he became the manager, uh, we were abroad at the World Cup and I was talking to him just and he was asking me things about the, what goes on and so, so I knew really by, by talking to him there that uh, he would still want me to be part of his plans. So when I came back it turned out uh, one of the best seasons I've ever had at Rangers. Uh, I was very fit for coming back from the World Cup, the pre-season training and uh, it turned out a tremendous year and with the players that he was bringing in uh, from down south you could see that he really meant business. With the players like Terry Butcher and Chris Woods and people like that coming in uh, with all respect to the players that we had the previous years, uh, obviously we had a team there with some of the players maybe weren't good enough to play for Rangers. I mean, I remember a, a two-year spell while I was at Rangers uh, during that time where I was, the, I think I was the only international player uh, from Rangers. I was the only player in the Scotland squad, which people would find very, very strange nowadays, only have one player from a Rangers squad. Um, but it just shows you the, the difference that he made as soon as he arrived at the club. Rangers' first championship in nine years was clinched at Pitodre. Soon as his first season climaxed with a title that had proved elusive for nearly a decade. To win the championship there and, and to actually be there all through the, the years coming that we didn't win that league championship, it was very, very frustrating. Uh, and I was lucky enough to be there when we eventually got the championship again. But, I mean, it really is the main thing that the supporters of Rangers wanted to win that championship so badly and it was very frustrating for us to go these years and, and not to win it for them. Uh, during that time we were picking up uh, at least a cup, maybe maybe one a year and things like that. So we, we still had a, a small bit of success, but it was a league championship really that everybody was after. And uh, it was a tremendous day when we eventually won it again. The good times were rolling for Rangers. Who could forget Davies' performance against Ilves Tampere? Cooper trying to get it away from the defenders. Here's Butcher. Across goal is there. Flight the scorer, Cooper Butcher Fleck, 
1-0 and 30 minutes on the clock. That's the breakthrough that Rangers needed. There's the corner. Tremendous header by Butcher. Cooper hoists it in. Straight back out. Referee looking at his watch. Cooper inside the box. Left foot shot coming up. Great save. Durant out in front. Driven in and it's there. Flick again on half time. 2 0. Two goals for Robert Flight, two goals for Rangers, right on the stroke of half time. Soon as thought he had got it with that tremendous shot and save. And what a scramble it was at the end of the day. Cooper tried a left foot shot, the keeper again made a marvellous save. Durant turned it out in front, and Flight was there to make it 2 0 on the stroke of half time. Butcher again to Monroe. Cooper coming back, Monroe going forward. Cooper cuts inside. Finn's falling back. Still has it. An amazing one by Cooper. Could be a fantastic goal, it is. Oh, David Cooper, brilliant. Fleck, Hatsik, what a goal! Seven and a half minutes played. A superb goal, as you'll see. Rangers lead 3 nothing. Just look at this from close control. Looked as if he had lost it. Kept on going. Unselfishly squared it out in front. And Fleck said, thank you very much. That's my hat-trick. Now McMahon. Into Fraser. A lovely flick and a great chance. Goal. McCoyst. Durant flicked it on. McCoyst was there. 4 0 to Rangers. Look at that lovely flick by Durant. And McCoyst finishing was clinical. 4 0 to Rangers. I remember the, remember the match, um, I, th I think we won fairly comfortably in the end. Uh, I'd started a run out in the left wing, it's one of these runs you just keep going. And uh, I went into the box, beat two players, and everybody, even the, the keeper, thought I was going to finish it off myself, which possibly I could have. Uh, but I just side sidestepped it to Robert Fleck, who tapped it into the empty net. Uh, and uh, that's probably one of the best games I ever had for Rangers that night, although it was against a smaller side. But uh, you remember these, these nights, uh, even though it's a smaller side, it's, it's a big European night and you still got to get through. Just weeks after clinching the 89 Championship, Davies' 12-year career at Ibrox ended when he signed for his old teammate Tommy McLean at Motherwell. And this goal against Celtic ensured Motherwell's Premier League status. I think everybody thought that was a, a, a downward step for me at that time. Um, I played with Tommy, he was in one wing and I was the other at Rangers. Uh, very friendly with him off the park and uh, when he got in touch, uh, you know, th at that time I was beginning to be subbing the Rangers side and I thought to myself, well, if I'm only going to play for another couple of years, why not, uh, you know, go somewhere where I've possibly got more chance of uh, playing first-team football. And when I went there, people probably expected me just to play out my time and, and no play particularly well, but I had to prove these people wrong and I think I did that. And I think by winning the, helping to win the Scottish Cup in 91, uh, it was a, was a great thing for me and also for, for Motherwell Football Club. The Tommy was great all during that spell and he allowed me to to train, to do the training that I needed to train for somebody at my age, and he's been brilliant. New Year 94, and Davy returned to his first club, Clyde Bank, and he proved to be a popular figure with the bank's support. 
At the beginning of this year, he announced he would quit at the end of the season. And in the past few weeks, a new role. Joint presenter of a Scottish television soccer skills programme, Shoot, with Tommy Craig and Charlie Nicholas. Ironically, last Wednesday morning, he was teaching the art of the free kick, at which he'd been a genius. Excellent. Next one. Charlie? People do say the term is used very loosely. And it has been because we've always created the European footballers worldwide type thing as the genius, geniuses of the game. And David Cooper was one. There's Douglas, there's Hoddle, there's Best and Johnson. And Cooper is a way up in that bracket. Everybody knows it. It just probably take, took too long for everybody to really admit it. Unfortunately, in such a sad time, it comes out. But we all knew it before. It was just a matter of time before it was going to be announced. He used to joke, Davey, um, that um, he made about 80 or 90% of my goals, right? And I used to give him a bit of stick back and, and, say, and Big Derek and I used to say that we, actually it was the other way about. We made him for throwing, our, throwing ourselves in front of these lousy crosses for 10 years, you know? But the more you think about it, especially early on in my Rangers career, I mean, he did. He must have made about 70% of the goals, you know, it was incredible. You think about the assists he made and, and the fabulous pieces of skill and he beat two or three players and then roll a lot on a plate for you. And um, I certainly miss him, certainly miss him. I think he's a massive loss because the name Davy Cooper is a household name within Scotland and the ability that he's got on the field of play and the, his love for the game, I think that's what kept him going uh, for as long as it did. And, in my opinion, uh, Davy should possibly uh, have went to Italy or whatever earlier on because I think his talents deserve to be shown in a, a broader spectrum than uh, Scotland. I'll just remember him uh, personally, not the player. I think everybody will remember the player, all the snippets. But I just think personally he was a real a great guy, friendly guy, a great laugh, and uh, you know I'm going to miss him badly. He was the type of player who could eliminate a game even if that game was, was exciting in itself, David could always take it another stage higher with a flick of the ball or the way he controlled the ball. He had a, a wonderful confidence which he spread to other players. Uh, I know the Rangers players looked to him uh, as a leader. Well, I think he, he, he was a popular player. First and foremost, he, he was a Rangers man and he never had that um, from anybody. He always um, held Rangers very highly and had been a supporter since a boy. And, uh, I think his ability is of a type that any football fan would like and to think that they could have in their team. And um, I think he was appreciated by most. I think football fans love David Cooper. Didn't matter what team he supported, if you couldn't admire David Cooper's skills, there's something wrong with you. He was a particular favourite with Rangers fans because they remember uh, his skills, his passing, and his free kicks, like the free kick against Aberdeen in the School Cup final, I think it was 1988. And, and I said at the time, you know, uh, that was the reason he invented nets, because shots like that would have finished up in Rutherford, you know. He, he was a superb player. He had so much to offer in terms of teaching kids in this country how to play the game. There was nobody better qualified in terms of talent to show our kids how to play. I think especially the last three days we had together was, it was just unique. He, he was just in his element. And I think he was even, some of the, the STV crew, he was teaching one of them how to control the ball and hold it with his foot. You know, he just, that, that's the type of mood he was in. He was so relaxed and so happy. Hi there, this is Broadwood Stadium, home of Clyde Football Club and home to us over the next 12 weeks. As you can see, we have our own group of youngsters who, like you, want to improve their skills. So perhaps someday some of them and some of you can master skills like this. This is shit. When it comes to dribbling and running with the ball, people say there's none better than our own Davy Cooper. Unfortunately, this week, Davy's going to be the expert. Unfortunately. You realise, Rude Hill, it was approached for today's programme, I couldn't do it. So I've got to be next in line. You're nice and cheap, Davy, that's your problem. <laughs> Seriously, though, Davy, I don't see many players in the modern game the way you play where you play wide or anywhere else, take men on. I mean, what do you think? It's certainly different. I think all over the world, Charlie, it's different now. They're going for speed and strength rather than... Yeah, see these guys that talk a good game? They've got a lot of hard work to do here. A lot of practice to get... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> 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 I was going to take one. So watch what you eat. 
that's about it for the first part of shoot. We'll see you after the break. So, Coach, what are you going to put us through today, then? Well, we're going to practice a few training routines to help improve our ball control. But obviously, before we do that, we must get their muscles warmed up. And I always feel it's important for the players to wear a nice warm layer under the tracksuit. OK, Coach, I'm ready to go. <laughs> no? So in the meantime, get, get practicing. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> she get the ball. I'm laughing at you. He's going to get the ball first. He's going to get the ball before he gets practice. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, unfortunately, is going to be the last in our series. So we'll be having a look back at all the skills featured here on shoot. You'll never forget it, Coop. Forget it. David, she's smashing having an expert to show the kids how it should be done. Tommy, I really enjoyed it. It was a great afternoon. Yeah. Hey, I told him he's an expert. What about me? Sounds like a challenge to me, David. It sure does. Yep. OK. First team round of markers and back. Winner. On. I'll have some of that. On. Let's go then. Go! I think the continent may have suited me in certain countries with the, the amount of time that you get in the ball. Um, but I don't look back. I mean, I, I was a Rangers supporter and I spent the bulk of my career at, at the team, uh, you know, the team that I loved. So I know way I look back. As I said before, you, you can't do that. You, you'll drive yourself crazy if you look back and think, if I'd have done this, if only I'd have done that. You take your chance and I had a great career at Rangers. Claybank first Rangers and Murrow now back at Claybank. I've enjoyed every minute of it.